In this Grasshopper tutorial, we're going to develop a parametric brick wall. And uh, for this exercise, we're going to use a NURB surface. And I want to specify some of the key aspects of this tutorial. Basically, uh, we want to have a NURB surface where we can uh, have the courses for each brick uh, to be stacked so that we can have this type of staggering effect. And I'm also going to um, have this type of um, staggered coursework. Uh, you can see the alternating voids between the breaks. So that's going to run consistently because we're going to divide each row using some sort of length parameters. So let's begin by uh, defining a wall. So I'm going to switch on the orthographic view and let's actually move this here. So I'm going to do something similar to this one. Uh, we can start by uh, looking kind of at the bottom and the top profiles of the surface. Um, so let's say I turn my grid snap on and for the bottom I want to have um, let's say a course um, like this and for the top layer uh, I want to have another type of movement. Let's say it's going to go like that. So these two are going to be combined at a specific height and let's specify that as three meters. So that's essentially going to be the uh, outline for the bottom and the top of my uh, of my brick wall. And I'm going to begin by simply lofting these two so that we can have uh, this type of information. And at that point, we can start uh, building our script in Grasshopper. So I'm going to load this up as a surface. And um, you can also play around with the lengths of the curves, but I tried to keep them uh, kind of similar because there was grit snapping. Uh, but you can also try other types of uh, walls. For instance, we can also do, let's actually go back to the curve. Let's actually make these a bit more similar here. So let's say that I can do set point, set y, and let's say that they're gonna end at some somehow similar location. And this bottom one, we can maybe um, push it a bit more. So let's see. Let's say that this actually goes a bit behind maybe because it goes in the forward. Let's say it goes behind so that that will give us a nicer effect, I think. Yes, so like that. And I'm going to load this into Grasshopper and Afterwards, I'm going to start by dividing the surface. So divide surface is located under uh, surface utilities. And then you lo load the surface into um, the surface and then we can define some parameters here. So let's give it some high numbers. So we want to define a U and V parameter. So let's hide this one for now. And the the U goes in the vertical direction, so that's going to define the height of my courses. So we can make a straight calculation because the height of the wall is going to be three meters. Let's say each course is um, half a centimeter, so um, or let's say ten centimeters. So we can actually have larger bricks um, for this exercise. So if it's ten centimeters, uh, then we're essentially going to have um, a lot. So let's let's actually start with. 30. So we're going to have 30 courses. And then horizontally, we can have a different number, but I'm going to start with 60. And um, can actually, let's start with 40. And then we can uh, make our way uh, further up. Now, the next part is actually interpolating these. Um, so the horizontal division is not going to affect as much. It's just going to affect the resolution that we get. We can also do a plane intersection, but this seemed to be somehow easier. So you can also control the, the, the uh, critical criteria. The parameter is the vertical division. So we set that by 30. So these are the lines that will determine the individual brick uh, courses. And then what I want to do is flatten this list. You can see that it's uh, grafted here. So I come in here and then flatten it. And then we can do a dispatch. 
Now, what the dispatch does is it will use a pattern, in this case true and false. So when the data hits true, it will go into the container A. When it's false, it will go to the container B. So we're going to do something similar to each of these. So I'll show you first what we're going to do. Um, let's start with the bottom layer, this one, group A. So I'm going to divide these curves uh, based on their length. So let's say that length is going to be 0.3, 30 centimeters. So these are the locations for those uh, bricks. And I want to place an XY plane to each of these. Uh, the plane sizes are way too big, but that's not going to be an issue. And then I'm going to do an align plane here so that we take the planes in and for the direction, I'm going to use the tangents so that the plane directions will be aligned to the input surface. And I'm going to um, turn it off for now. And for the other curves, uh, we're going to do something a bit different. So I'm going to take the curves as well. So what we want to do is uh, to have the staggering effect. So if I do the same type of division here, you can see that the points will be um, juxtaposed. They will be on top of each other. But what we want is these points to be here. So if I do, if I draw on my screen, we want the brick course to go like this so that um, we can have that type of uh, staggering effect. And in order to achieve this, this point's um, evaluation and this point's evaluation, they need to be somehow interpolated. And we can eyeball that as well. So uh, what I mean by that is when you divide the curve, you get the parameters here. So let's look up the parameters. And when I look up these parameters, you can see that they're going in uh, terms of length. And we can pretty much use these values as well. So remember that we divide it initially at 0 0.3. So what if we add um, another parameter here? Let's call it 0.15, right? So that's kind of the mid length of these divisions. And then I'm going to evaluate these curves again at these new parameters. But because the data here is going to be grafted, because we have multiple curves coming in, I need to right click here and graft the data as well. So you can now see some of them are going to exceed that because we are going beyond the length of the curves, but we got the points where we need them to be. So this is going to give us kind of a weaving effect when we want to put the points. Uh, and I'm going to turn off the divide length so you can see the nice overall distribution. And the remaining part is basically going to be the same. So I'm going to first uh, put planes at each of these points and then align the planes using the tangents of the curves. And in the last part, what we want to do is create a center box. A center box is essentially, um, sorry, a domain box. A domain box essentially takes in a plane as its base plane, and then we need uh, domains for X, Y, and Z. So we need to define, uh, let's say, some values. And um, our lengths are going to be from zero to one. So let's start by um, saying our width is going to be, let's say, 0 0.15. And I want to multiply that by minus one. So minus one dot dot one gives you a slider with minus one. And I want to construct a domain. So when I construct that domain, the negative 15 would be um, the, the starting value for my domain and 0 0.15 will be the end of my domain. And this is going to go uh, for the, um, let's start with uh, assigning, actually let's start making copies of this. So we make three copies, this goes to X, this goes to Y, and we have another one for Z. Now the Z is the easiest because we know the courses will be um, 10 centimeters, so we need 0 0.05. Um, for the thickness of the wall, we can go with the same value, so we can have 0 0.05 or 0 0.07 would also be okay. And for the width, 
if I do 0 0.15, you can see that the bricks are kind of intersecting with each other. So I'm going to go slightly shorter, so 0 0.12 in this case. And once you get these numbers down, all you need to do is actually make a copy of this uh, box and assign the new planes to it. And that actually takes care of everything else. So if I turn off my script, you can see now we created the, the bricks uh, on the parametric surface that we had. And if you want to bake them, you can create a geometry container here, uh, plug these in and right click and bake. And that should do it. So the these extensions at the end, we get those because we um, we have kind of an overall uh, curve that is, I mean, we exceed the length of the curve when we add those prompts. So you can manually delete those if you want it. And that gives you a kind of nice uh, brick coursework. And you can see um, all the bricks are also stacking uh, pretty nicely. So, um, um, I hope that was an interesting exercise to look at. Uh, I'm going to do another exercise in the future where we can also rotate or add individual rotation for these bricks. So imagine like having an attractor and where we can open the surface a bit. Uh, but in terms of getting the basic construction done, um, I just want to show you how you can achieve that by dividing the curve using contours and uh, lengths for the units of the bricks. So that, um, that is a more stable, that seems like a more stable approach. So I hope you uh, liked the video. If you have any questions, you can leave comments uh, below this video. And uh, if you find the content interesting, uh, please subscribe to the channel. I upload videos uh, every week and try to cover tools in Grasshopper and scripting. And um, thanks for watching.